Hey there everyone, Daniel here with Slow Haste. In today's video, I wanted to take some time to explore granular synthesis methods on the DigiTact and how you can apply them to a track or a song that you're working on. I'm taking this method from Loopop's Advanced DigiTact Tutorials videos. It's really useful, there are a lot of great tips in there. So I'll show you how I implemented this specific method and then we're gonna take some time and just play around with it and see what kind of cool sounds we can get utilizing the same sample uh, that I put in the song. So to start, I'm gonna play a jam and then I will review the parts that actually utilize granular synthesis. It's just two tracks on one of the patterns, so it's not like a huge part of the song, but I'll talk a little bit about granular synthesis and uh, how, how it can be challenging to kind of make the foundation of a song uh, utilizing granular synthesis. So without further ado, let's jump into the jam and then we'll get to chatting. Okay, so that was a pretty psychedelic lo-fi hip-hop tune, I would say. Call it what you will. Uh, it's pretty maximalist. I kind of went all out. And I'll do a quick breakdown of the beat after we talk a little bit more about granular. But uh, to get started, I just want to chat about what granular synthesis is at its foundations. So it is a basic sound synthesis method that operates on the microsound time scale. And it's based on the same principle as sampling. Uh, but it's not just a playback of a sample. Uh, instead, you essentially split a sample into small pieces, um, and you could call each of those slices a grain. Um, you can layer grains on top of each other, play them side by side, play them in different directions, but the organization of those grains played back as audio is granular synthesis. So the tracks that utilize granular are um, tracks six and eight of pattern three, and the sample that those tracks come from can be heard on pattern two and it's track six and it sounds like this so 
So that is just a little progression that I played on the Arteria Microfreak and sampled directly into the Dig Attack. So I'm going to explain what I did um, on, on this track with that granular. And I believe, yep, track six utilizes that sample. And what I did, the, the key here is placement of trigs and utilization of the LFO. So I have trigs on, uh, played back on different sample slots. And what loop hop does is uh, he places a trig on every single slot. And this is where I started. So I am going to play you this track and then we'll copy it to another pattern and hear what it sounds like with the trig on every single spot. So. So you can hear this pattern is different every time. And we have two different things going on here with the LFO. We have the sample start time being modulated quite heavily. And you can see that by going to the waveform. Every little slice, every grain being played is essentially randomized because the LFO is at its maximum depth. And then I also have the second LFO modulating the depth of the first LFO. So this is in, in turn making this control incredibly unpredictable. So we're getting little slices playing throughout. And it's that simple foundation of granular synthesis being uh, taking audio from the microsound timescale, essentially, this being the audio that we are slicing into grains and applying multiple randomization parameters to get an end result. And it's that simple, right? So I also, on pattern three, on track eight, I utilized a similar method with a piano sample. And I did the same thing. Because of the simplicity of the sample included in this track, this piano sample, which is, I could just play the actual sample. That's the sample. Because it is a much simpler sample, it's not a progression it leads to more predictable results. And I think I entered trigs at different pitches um, to get that variance. Because you can see it's just a short sample there. And I programmed this a couple of days ago. So forgive me for not mentioning that earlier. But yes, I, I intentionally changed the pitches of those notes that you're hearing. Um, but it leads to a more predictable melody. So I want to play those two tracks for you together. And in the context of everything else, it sounds like this. So yeah, it's very subtle in the background. And like I said, it's not a huge part of the song. It just adds that little bit of extra spice and funk um, to keep things interesting as the track develops from the initial theme and pattern into a new chord progression. And we change up the drum pattern a little bit, uh, get a little bit more complex with the percussive elements and just add some frantic energy, which if you've been watching my videos by now, you know, is a method I really like to use to kind of build a pattern, change the chord progression and make things frantic, um, kind of chaotic in the stereo field. So with that said, um, I hope you can see how it could be hard to sort of base a song off of granular synthesis 
using this method with the dig attack because the results are intentionally not super predictable. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have that as uh, the foundation of a chord progression. That said, it is easy to do, um, just not in this context, right? So you'd wanna very kind of meticulously organize the grains to different lengths, rhythms, and pitches in order to establish that foundation. Um, so what I wanna do now is kind of just quickly talk you through the rest of the song, how I built it, how I composed it, and decided to kind of add that little granular bit in there. And then we can take uh, that sample from pattern two, this sort of, uh, it's kind of like this wintry, cool Chinese synth pad. So I want to take that, show you the loop hop method of just putting a trig on every step and uh, messing with some parameters to see if we can get anything cool, interesting, and or consistent. Okay. So um, I started this with pattern two. I'll just go over the kick drum really quickly. I have the metronome on so you can hear how kind of like slackerish the beat is. And especially with the hi-hat, it's super prominent. So yeah, um, I knew I wanted to have this like really kick heavy rhythm and I don't know. Oh, you know what? I'm not even on the right trig. So that's why you can't see my kicks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here we go. So I'm using a lot of parameter locking to change the pitch direction and bit rate of the kick as the progression goes. And then the hi-hat's pretty simple. It's just single hits, double hits, and then the snare, even more straightforward. But this beat is super effective. I think in the context of the main chord sample, which is this. Let me reload the pattern so it's at full volume. There we go. So this is the whole chord sample. It is, as you could have probably guessed if you've seen some of my other Dig Attack videos from the Blank Forms, Tepe's sample packs. Super great chords and pads and one-shot sounds. Highly recommend those as always. So yeah, I played the first half. And then I, uh, for the second note, I just pitched the note up and start it from about halfway through. So it sounds, I think it sounds really cool in combination with everything. And um, I also have some uh, pitch modulation and some side shading on that chord sample. And then on track eight, I have this single piano sample and I have it come in on phrase three. It would help if I unmuted the track. Really simple, just single hits and then pitched up the, the chord sample for that last hit. Um, and then I, um, I don't know how this happened, but for, uh, I just decided to like mess with it before I knew where this song was going. Um, and I just, uh, I did the track and then kind of control all. So if you hold track and turn one of the knobs, you can um, you can change all the settings in a pattern. So I copied and pasted it to a different pattern, and then I just like messed with the filter and the filter envelope on set and came up with this. So 
so yeah, that was just a fun way to kind of change it up and add some variance. And for this, uh, this part that I mentioned, I recorded on the micro freak, I've been messing with that. And I just kind of recorded a bunch of samples after I'd already started this tune. Um, and I had the, just the drum beat of this playing in the background to kind of improvise on the micro freak as I was learning some of the different, um, settings on the, on that synth and ended up playing this. <laughs> with the intention of kind of layering it over everything. So those melodic components together just kind of sound like this. And for this alternate pattern, I got the idea of using this granular synthesis method from the loop hop video that I had playing on in the background while I was at work one day. And I was like, oh, it would, I think it would be so cool to use uh, that micro freak, that wintry micro freak sample um, with the bit rate cranked. Um, I even have the, the sample name as micro freak chord crush because I knew I wanted to have the bit rate cranked on that. Um, and I just kind of went to town and played around. Um, and once I had these two, kind of ambient airy granular synth patches down I was like okay I know this kind of lends itself well to a to a change in chord progression on that main tape haze chord sample and since we were going into like uncharted territory I thought that changing up the beat would be cool. It's like a little bit more frantic, but kind of minimal, more minimal at the same time. I wanna play the percussive parts for you uh, back to back. So this is the original pattern. And then. So yeah, hi-hat, a little straightforward, lots of reverb. Definitely have it dancing around the stereo field for the kick. I have an LFO on the bit rate. And then my favorite part is the snare track. So yeah, just tons of parameter locking. So yeah, that's that. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you a quick rundown of the beat. But now for the fun and experimental part, let us... Um, okay, so I went ahead and just uh, put the sample back to its default state. A little bit of reverb, delay, overdrive, and such. So what we do is... put a trigger on every step. So it sounds like that. And we can effectively scan through Right? So you can scan through the sample because it's hitting at every trig. And we can do the same thing in reverse by playing with the length. So, let's try a few things. Sounds like a phone ringing. Um, so let's try let's try doing some parameter locking. Um, I'll do some um, some recording, live recording of parameter changes, and then we'll play with the LFO just to see what happens. Thank you. 
Okay, let's see what that yielded us. So that's cool. We can kind of get like a momentary, a little momentary button by just hitting the trigger at its default state. And if we change the tuning. That doesn't necessarily sound good, but you get the idea. It's just like crazy to play around with. So like if you're into experimental music at all, this is such a powerful tool um, yeah, to mess around with. And you can get really ambient with this. This isn't like the most ambient friendly sample and the way I'm programming it we're getting a ton of artifacts which I absolutely love and it does sound a little frantic but you could get some really calming soothing stuff some really washy sounds using this method getting a little carried away but you get the point i just kind of wanted to show you how easy it is to just take a sample any sort of extended melodic sample in a key and really play around with it and then you can kind of like carve that into a pocket throw it somewhere in the stereo field put it down really low and just have like a nice ambient effect to play with um so yeah that is all for today's video. I hope you learned something. Um, I think this can be implemented on other samplers as well. I just wanted to show you on the Dig Attack because it's what I've been using a lot and it is what I'm comfortable with. But definitely let me know if you've used similar methods on other hardware group boxes or other software synths or plugins or anything like that. I would love to hear about it. Well, anyways, thank you as always for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the music and learned something and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.